Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I want to share 25 plus amazing tips, tricks, and features to customize your Samsung Galaxy Tab S4, and of course, enhance your ownership of this fantastic tablet. Now, you paid a lot of money for this tablet, so it's best to learn as much as possible to master your device. Of course, you can also watch this video even if you don't own this device and simply want to learn more before making a purchase. So let's dive in and discover. I will also drop some links down below to buy the Tab S4 at the lowest possible prices online. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how to rename your tablet. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the settings, go all the way down, go to about tablet, and on the top here it says Galaxy Tab S4. What you can do is you can click on edit and give your name and give your tablet a proper name. So what I can do is I can say Saki Tab. Okay, so now I know uh, that is the Tab S4 for Saki. So if I click done, that's the new name for my tablet. And of course, you can name your tablet anything that you desire. The next tip I want to talk about is the face widgets on your lock screen. So if I lock this uh, thing and if I turn it on, on the top here, you'll see a clock. But what you can do is you can swipe over and you have access to a bunch of face widgets. So right now, you only see two of them. But if we go into the settings over here, and if we scroll over to the lock screen, you tap on that, you can go to face widgets, and then you can enable today's schedule, you can enable the next alarm, and of course you can enable the weather uh, face widget. Now if I go back out, you'll see a bunch of extra things. So if I go over here, now I have the, uh, the music controller is gonna be here. If you're playing music, you're gonna see a controller for the music play pause buttons. Uh, this is today's schedule. So it looks like I have a, a credit card payment due very soon at seven o'clock. And of course, if you swipe one more time, it's going to tell you when is your next alarm. So these are what are called face widgets. Now there's a couple more things you can do on the lock screen. If I go back in here to the settings, and if I go to the lock screen again, uh, I can go and change the clock style. So on the lock screen, this is the clock style that you just saw. However, the Tab S4 gives you so many options to customize that clock. So you can pick any one of these clocks over here, some fancy options, some analog options, and then you have this one over here, which I happen to like. And not only can you change the clock style, you can actually go and change the color of the actual background of the clock. Uh, you can pick from these preset colors, or you can pick any color that you want. Let's just do red for demonstration, click done. Uh, go back into the actual lock screen and as you can see now there is a red clock in the back of course the fantastic thing over here is uh, if you do go to that clock style you can do any one of these in any color that you desire including this cool looking little thing uh, as you can see okay so that's the lock screen customization there's a couple more things you can do over there uh, you can change the contact information so I can say Saki tech uh, what I can do is I can change the two apps that were at the bottom on each side so if I tap this you can choose a left shortcut and a right shortcut so with the left one let's just for demonstration do calculator and this one for demonstration do calendar uh, let's go back out to the lock screen and now as you can see I've got a different clock and two different shortcuts and even over here it says Saki tech which is something that I typed personally so that could be your personal signature if you so desire. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4 comes uh, with stereo speakers that run by default, but also has Dolby Atmos surround sound that really enhances the experience of, of how you hear your audio, your video, and all that stuff. So what you have to do is you have to actually enable the Dolby Atmos because by default it is turned off. You want to go to the settings, uh, you want to go into the sound and vibration, scroll all the way down, go to sound quality and effects, and from here make sure uh, Dolby Atmos is in fact enabled. Uh, you can go into it to make the modifications you desire, or you can simply turn it on and off right over here. Make sure it is turned on, you will get some really nice sounding movies and music. Additionally, at the bottom you have a sound equalizer. Okay, so what you can do is you can use these guys to modify, this is a dial that you can use as a dial. So you can modify the bass, the treble, and of course over here you can change it to instrumental or vocal. 
okay? Uh, if you're an expert and you want to go into the details, just tap on advanced, and from here you can do much more customization on your equalizer. And if you tap the equalizer, you have all these preset options you can use uh, based on what you're listening to. Uh, make sure that you guys fully utilize uh, the stereo speakers on this thing uh, by modifying your sound quality and effects. Now, one more thing you're going to be using a lot is this navigation bar at the bottom. So you've got the home key, you've got the recent apps key, and you've got the back key over here. Uh, you can make some modifications to this area over here. So let's go to the settings really quick. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the uh, display and then go to navigation bar and there's a bunch of options. The first thing you can do is you can change the color of this bar at the bottom. So you can pick from these uh, preset colors and it's going to change to that color. The other thing you can do is based on your personal uh, desire, you can change the layout of these buttons. You can tap this guy and you can go to uh, switch the recents over here and the back key comes over here or you can keep it the way I do it, back and recents and the home uh, key stays in the middle. And of course, there's a way to actually hide this navigation bar. The first thing you wanna do is this is gonna be uh, disabled by default. So you're not, you're not gonna see a little dot on the corner here. If you enable the dot, that actually allows you to double tap this so the navigation bar disappears so you can get a more fully immersive screen in front of you. If you want to bring up the navigation bar, again, you just swipe from the bottom, it comes right up, and then you lock it in place by double tapping that uh, dot over here, okay? So it's something you can enable or disable. If you disable it, this navigation bar stays here no matter what you're doing, unless you're watching a video full screen. So if I go over here and launch um, any other application, the navigation bar is gonna be at the bottom here. Uh, it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, but like I said, if you want to actually hide it, uh, you can use this option here. And again, by default, it is not hidden. But if you do want to hide it, double tap, boom, it's gone. Bring it up, relock in place, okay? So that's the navigation bar. And of course, it is important to be able to see everything properly on your tablet. So again, go to the display, go to font and screen zoom, and make sure you modify these so you can actually zoom the screen in so you can see more on the screen. Or if you want, you can just change the size of the font on the screen so I can make it like this. If you have perfect eyesight, you get to see much more on the screen like this. Uh, if you want something in the middle, like I do, uh, just keep it somewhere here and you'll get the bigger fonts and see more easily on the screen if you have bad eyesight, all right? And of course, one more thing that I use all the time is the notifications panel. So that's the panel right here. Now by default, when you pull this up, it takes you into the app drawer. When you pull this down, it also takes you into an app drawer. But in my case, I customized it so it actually, no matter where I pull down, it brings down the notifications panel. So instead of going like this or like that, I can just go like this and boom, as you can see, it is right here. So I can do it just like this, okay? Instead of doing this, which is a default option. To enable this option, what you wanna do is pinch on the screen or press and hold on the screen, go to home screen settings, and then uh, enable this option that says quick open notification panel. If you disable this guy, when I do this, it goes to the app drawer. No matter what I do, it goes to the app drawer. Press and hold, go to home screen settings, and enable this, then I get this neat little feature. The final thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is when you pull down the notifications panel, as you can see, I have a brightness slider right over here. Now, some people are not gonna see that brightness slider. You have to actually enable it to be able to see it on your first pull down. Normally, you have to pull down one more time and it shows up right here. So what you wanna do is tap on this arrow and make sure this show control on top is enabled. So I can disable this. When I click done, if I pull this down, you're not gonna see the brightness slider. If you pull down one more time, it's gonna be right there. But if you want it the first time, just make sure uh, show control on top is enabled. So it's gonna be easier for you to just adjust your brightness as you desire, okay? So that's show control on top. Now, another pretty important thing is the battery management on your tab. Now, if your tab is running low on the battery, you can modify, you can customize your battery savers uh, to get some more juice out of your tab uh, in case you're doing something important and you need more battery life. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the device maintenance. Uh, from here, you want to go into the battery. And from battery, you can actually change the power saving modes uh, to medium power saving modes. 
And when you do that, it's going to actually uh, go to the regular orientation. Let me cancel that. You can go to the maximum uh, power savings mode and you can apply that. Uh, one thing that you need to be aware of is when you do go to the medium power savings mode, uh, you can come here and you can customize this uh, based on your needs. It's something you probably should learn. Uh, but right now the power saving modes is off. So the tab is running at maximum capacity. Uh, but like I said, if you want to extend your battery life, you can go to max and that's actually going to convert your tablet into a black and white screen with only minimum applications available, which is going to extend your battery life considerably uh, in case you need the tablet for something and you simply don't have uh, the resources to charge it at the given moment. So that's the battery. Over here you have the storage, which will tell you how much is free, how much is being used on your uh, tablet as far as storage is concerned. So this is a 64 gigabyte tablet version. 15.5 uh, is being used uh, by the system. Only this much bit for the images. Uh, 4 megabytes for the audio. Nothing for the video. And apps are taking 762 megabytes. Okay. So from here you can do some storage management. Uh, the other thing is if you have any unwanted uh, temporary files you can tap this and that will actually free up some extra storage in case you need more storage for photos or video and one more thing here if you tap on this icon uh, you can go into the storage settings and then do a couple more extra things over here uh, the only thing that I actually want to show you here is if you do if you do go to this option at the bottom it says files if you tap on the files it will take you into the file explorer uh, which is a very nice way to actually browse through what is inside your tablet. So you can browse through images, audio, videos, documents, downloads. Now My Files is an application you can also access from the Samsung folder, which is right here. So My Files is like a file explorer for your tablet. All right. Now there's a couple more things you need to know about the tablet. Uh, it does not have a fingerprint sensor like the Tab S3 that came before this. What this tablet has is it has face recognition and iris scanner. So if I go to the settings, uh, if I go into the biometrics and security, uh, you're, you're not going to see the fingerprint sensor because it does not exist. What you can do is you can do a face recognition unlock or you can register your eye eyes, uh, your eyeballs to unlock the device, which is the more secure option. Or what you can do is you can do a combination unlock, which is called the intelligent scan. Uh, intelligent scan combines the face recognition and iris scanner together for a faster unlock, as it describes at the bottom right over here. Combined face and iris scanning for better results. Okay, but again, you can do either one of these or together at the same time. But do not be looking for a fingerprint sensor because it because it is not here in the Tab S4. Uh, which is a good thing because you're getting more screen real estate. And that was the end of the video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Tab S4, just drop it down below and hopefully someone or myself can answer that question. And of course, subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come and give this video a thumbs up. And if you do use Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.